And here, I want to bring this away from the Navajo now for a moment to another people, the Oglala Sioux of, uh, of uh, D the Dakotas, the Dakota Indians. Those of you who know this wonderful, beautiful book, uh, Black Elk Speaks by Nyhart, will recall the story. <coughs> it's of a Oglala Sioux medicine man who uh, had, when he was a very small boy, a nine-year-old youngster, an immensely beautiful vision. And the vision was uh, included, among other things, himself at the center of the world. Here he is at the center of the world. And as he says, um, here is the cosmic tree. Here are the birds flying. Here are the powers of the four directions. And he is on his horse at the center of the world. And now he says something very interesting. The center of the world on which I found myself was Mount Harney in uh, South Dakota. But then he said, but the center of the world is everywhere. And there he states very clearly the theme with which I opened this whole series, that there are two aspects to the myth. One is the general, universal one. The center of the world is everywhere. And the other is the specific folk inflection proper to this, that, or the other tradition. The center of the world is in South Dakota, if you're an Aglala Sioux. If you are a Muslim, the center of the world is Mecca. Or the center of the world is Rome. Or the center of the world is Jerusalem. Or the center of the world is Benares. Or the center of the world is Lhasa and the Potala of the Dalai Lama. This is important. One must realize that the symbolism of one's own myth is simply a local inflection of the universal forms. 